मेक श्योर ये कर लीजिएगा कि Yes, please. Am I audible? Okay. Uh, I'm welcome once again. Uh, we are on the last day of our SBL workshop. Uh, basically, there are two, three things that we would want to, uh, like now, we will be looking at. The first thing is that uh, from now onwards, what should be our practice strategy? As I have uh, told you that you are going to practice in the format that I have given. The questions that I have given. Make sure that you are practicing the exact same numbering of questions that I have already given. All those students who have practiced at least four to five attempt, last five attempt past papers have very fair chances of clearing this exam. At least five, last five. But don't see, there are two ways of tips. One way is that I can start from September 2018, which was the first attempt of SBA. The other way is that I can start from the previous. Rather than going for September 2018, start with the previous one because that was the first time and that was the most easiest one. Why? Because ACCA teachers and ACC examining body had given nothing but three specimen examination. And in accordance with, uh, let's suppose, that when I started teaching that subject at that uh, specific time, what happened is that those three specimen papers, uh, I made them, my, made my students practice. And at the end of the day, they were the most difficult ones. So we practiced for the most difficult one and we got the easiest. However, now the quantity of papers and the quality of papers is increasing on day by day. So make sure that you practice it very religiously. My expectation for the day is that they might give you a, a car related interest. <laughs> like, however, the best part about uh, SBL examination team right now is that whenever they are giving this car, uh, whenever they are giving an industry, they are not testing you on the basis of professional jargons. They are not testing you on the basis of professional jargons. For example, uh, if they would want, they would have used the professional industrial jargons of car industry, but they are not doing this. However, what they are doing is they are trying to keep it very generic. But once this paper becomes uh, a pre seen material paper, they are going to be testing on the uh, given scenario related to professional jargon. So for that specific time period, we'll be talking about later on. Um, one thing is that keep on practicing unless you are practicing in terms of your verbal communication or maybe in terms of, uh, uh, let's suppose if you come and say that, okay, sir, I'm practicing it verbally, I'm seeing the question and then I'm seeing the suggestion answer and I feel more, more motivated and more confident enough that I'll be able to pass it in there. Trust me, you guys are making fool out of your own self. And unless you're not writing it on the CV platform, you will not be getting good marks. If you're not writing, you're not going to clear your exam. And unless you do not bring yourself into a consolidated time period of four hours, you will not be able to clear your exam. So you have to solve as many as questions for three different uh, benchmarks. The first benchmark is that keep on practicing till the time period you are reaching in the time of four hours. You know, once you start practicing, there are students who came and said, sir, it took six hours to write an exam. Okay, that is something acceptable because we still have seven, eight days. Then you started practicing. Then there came a time period when he told me that, okay, sir, I have practiced six different past papers. And now the sixth one was completed in three hours and 28 minutes. Starting from six hours, completing in three hours. And that three hours, 28 minute question was not something uh, 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 was not something which was very easy, was not a paper which he had uh, studied previously, but a paper which it was not seen by him and one of the most difficult ones that I can call it as the NCCP paper. He was able to complete the paper within three hours and 28 minutes, but the fact is that why? Because before that specific exam, he completed around uh, five different papers and those five different papers basically help you in passing this examination. So I would request you all to follow the same strategy. Bring yourself into a constraint in which you can, you know, uh, solve uh, this examination within the stated or stipulated time period. Number one. Number two, you need to solve these six examination by so that you can have an insight that all these six examination technical parts were easily dealt by me and I was confident enough that I am able to identify the model 
or if not, I am able to write a good generic answer. Number three, after attempting these six SBL examination paper, you will be confident enough in regard with your formats that you are not uh, basically, uh, let's suppose you are not basically only going through the format, but you are also trying to remember it out. Number four benchmark will be that at the end of the day, when you have attempted six examination, at the day of your paper, you will be so confident enough that, okay, I have attempted six papers and this paper does not seem to be something which may become a nightmare for me or something which I will not be able to pass. Honestly, if you are able to do those six papers, trust me over the fact that you'll be clearing this examination. One of the most important parameter of, you know, self-testing is, but once you are done with your examination, once you are done with your practice, let's suppose you are done with your first practice exam, what you can do is you can open the examiner answer at the end of your examiner answer. There are certain points given by the examiner which the examiner is expecting it from question number one, from question number two, from question number three. So you can match those points. Obviously, the wording of examiner and wording of yours will be different, but you can still manage those specific points. Again, we are at the end of our exam. Today is our last day. But one specific suggestion that I would give to every Matmalke, I would rather say that this is not a suggestion, but a quotation from my side. If you are not going to attempt at least six examinations, you will face tremendous amount of difficulty in your exam, real exam scenario. I might be a good one, I might be a bad one, but I'm giving you one of the bestest advice to pass this examination. Solve at least six papers and give at least two mock in the mock related examination scenario and you would be able to pass your exam. Honestly, you have done lots and lots of work. We have done each and everything in regard with technicalities. We have done each and everything in regard with professional marks. We have solved many questions to provide us confidence. We have solved P1, P3 examinations as well to improve our technical part. We have solved at least two to three past papers in, in section wise and within this workshop and previously as well. So you have a very clear insight of how you are going to attempt your examination. You have seen the examination platform. You have seen the practicing platform. You have seen the blank workspace. You know where to keep your uh, valuables. Two, three things that I would want every one of you to you know, um, have this right now in your mind is that if you're not going to have good sleep before your examination, if you're not going to have good sleep before your examination, you're going to sleep in your exam. And sleeping in your exam means something which is uh, which is going to cost you a lot. Number two, four hours of exam is not an easy task. You know, after sitting four hours in front of the screen, when I go back and when I keep let's uh, when I go back and when I'm driving my car, it seems like I'm into a dizzy position because it is not easy to look at this laptop screen for continuous four hours. My suggestion is don't overeat before going into your exam. <laughs> what majority of students, uh, you know, they do is that uh, before going into their exam, they have an anxiety of overeating something. You don't eat breakfast, which include halwa puri or maybe something like that, which, you know, like makes you go to a restroom again and again during your examination. So that's something which is totally not acceptable. See, these are such blunders which you guys know it very well. And one more thing that I used to do during my examination is that I used to have a bar of chocolate. Normally, uh, I mean, people consider this to be something which can reduce your anxiety. So you can have, uh, although they are going to unwrap that chocolate bar and give you the chocolate bar and you can take it with yourself, but that's something which is acceptable. You can have that chocolate bar and make sure, uh, okay, it's allowed, so it's good. And make sure that you buy it yourself not, and not for taking from some other person. Right. And uh, then you can ask for <laughs> And one more thing, make sure you have a bottle of water. Right. Uh, have your own bottle of water so that, and don't over drink uh, before going into your examination. That previous night of your examination should be very important. Don't do such activities in which, uh, in the tomorrow, in let's suppose, exam day. You're not in your senses. So make sure that you keep up uh, you know, um, and following such advice. One more thing. Uh, again, uh, just a
make sure that you are giving some amount of donation. Uh, this is also going to contribute. Okay, uh, let's just, uh, sir, what if we can't sit and complete the first two papers in a stretch uh, when practicing at home? Make sure that you start doing uh, the practice within four hours of stable time. That is something that becomes important. Uh, can you improve your voice quality? Uh, basically, it is not about my voice quality, it is about my voice that I get. And right now, I'm trying to improve it. Okay, so let's just quickly go through this new article. It's a small guide, guys. It's a small. Uh, Let's just go through this, these two articles. There are two articles that uh, we should uh, be going through. Guys, please. Uh, responsible leadership, a new article being given by the examination team. Um, an article which I get, uh, I ask, is my voice quality better now? Is my voice quality better now? I ask. It feels like surrounding. Is it good now? Is it good? Uh, I'm trying to speak. Uh, how can you confirm, please? Now, is it is it a uh, change or is it the same? Is it the same or is it change now? Is it good to go with? Okay. Uh, okay. 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 So uh, this is the article that we are going to go through now, and this is the article uh, that is a newly included article. Let's have a quick discussion on this. Rather than reading the article entirely from the ACCA website, I would rather suggest to go through this article, this part portion of the article that seems to be a good one. Uh, responsible leader, it's a new article. The new article was published by the examining SBL examining team in August 2020. Mm -hmm. uh, aimed at providing the definition, benefit, and role of responsible leader in meeting the stakeholders' expectations. The article is for the slavers A area. Slavers A area basically means mm -hmm. the area that relates to the strategy of the SBL. Uh, defining responsible leadership. Now, what do you understand by the word uh, responsible leadership? A responsible leadership may be considered as an extension of the stakeholder theory. You know what stakeholder theory is. Stakeholder theory is that there is a, there is a difference between the management and the shareholder of the company. The management is right now acting as a steward uh, or in the capacity of steward. Management are regarded as the agent and shareholders are regarded as the principals. So they both are, you know, uh, fighting against each other. And in between them, there is a leader that is being required. And however, the leader tries to satisfy all form of stakeholders, but he cannot uh, satisfy everyone at the same point of time. And in order to satisfy the different categories of stakeholders, a leadership use may be using a Mendelow's matrix model or the power interest model or power index model. This model is specifically for those individuals where a leader is trying to decide that which stakeholders to keep satisfied, which stakeholders to keep informed, on which stakeholders will I be investing minimal efforts and on which stakeholders are considered to be the key players of the company. So when I say that responsible leader may be considered as an extension of a stakeholder theory, but the business should focus not only on the stakeholders, but on sustainability, social responsibility, ethical behavior, in addition to financial objectives. So a person should not only be focusing on the financial objective, but on also on the objective of sustainability, social responsibility, and ethical behavior. Of course, it is important that the tone is set from the top, the CEO, and the board of directors. Thus, 
paving the way for managers at all the level of the organization to practice responsible leadership at the appropriate level for them. So what you are going to do is you're going to practice the responsible leadership categories at the uh, cost of making some sort of stakeholders dissatisfied and the other type of stakeholders to be satisfied. We are going to have a very objective decision as to what stakeholders should be held satisfied and what other stakeholders should not be satisfied. Therefore, it should be considered that uh, it should be considered to be a key factor for organizational culture, enabling and encouraging responsible behavior throughout the organization. Now, what you need to do, you need to be a responsible leader. And if you are a responsible leader, you are going to have a better objective of fulfilling the ideas of a successful company. Defining responsible leader. Now, how do you define a responsible leader? The idea of a responsible leader is being stood. That, see, you know it very well, sir. What is the purpose of these articles? It will be examined. Uh, actually, the purpose of this article is that from these articles, they might take some exhibits. They might make some exhibits. So this means that it, it will right now act as a free scene material for you. That you have already gone through these articles. Yes, but there are still chances that this can again be missed. Right? So uh, it is just like a pre-seen material. They might not be getting taking out the entire structure from this, but they may be they may be taking some of the portion from these articles and it may be helpful for you. So I guess you should go to, through these articles very reliably. So it says that the leader is being acting as a steward. Now, what do you mean by steward? A steward means the person who is going to be the custodian of the assets of the company, including the uh, the non-current asset, the tangible and intangible asset, and the leader is acting right now as an agent in regard with when we talk about the principal and agent relationship, which is known as the agency problem as well. A, a citizen, a coach, and a, and a visionary is uh, as relevant today as it was two decades ago. So, a leader is a citizen, a coach, a mentor, a visionary, a person who is going to give you guidance. A person who is going to be acting as a steward, a person who is going to provide you the opportunity of identifying your potentials and the opportunity of, you know, uh, getting that goal being transformed into a diamond. Then again, responsible leadership linked to both stakeholder theory and strategic planning. So stakeholder theory means how to satisfy the stakeholder at the same point of time. And strategic planning means how to identify a better plan for the overall perspective of the stakeholders, not only in terms of financial, but also providing business acumen or 360 degree view of each and every strategy that is going to be implemented within the company. Then it says, responsible leader, again, divided into two different parts. Stakeholder theory. Now, you all have gone through this. That is the reason why I'm doing these articles at the end. You have gone through these parts in your uh, regular classes. You already know what stakeholder theory is. You already know what strategic planning is. You know there are different models for strategic plans. It focuses on the broader need of the uh, of the other organization rather than on personal interest. Consider the source, uh, society and moral implications of decisions. In short, in short, decision making is based on long term rather than satisfying the immediate priorities. To repute or the, the repute of the organization can increase dramatically if it is known to be uh, to always behave in a responsible way. So, in order to increase the reputation of an organization, you need to behave in a way in which it can increase the reputation dramatically. Plus, you need to ensure that the satisfactory level of each and every stakeholder is being attained. See, again, I told you in the stakeholder duties that uh, there are certain customers whose interest is low, so whose interest is high, but power is low, so you need to keep them informed. However, there are certain individuals whose power is high, but interest is low, so you need to keep them satisfied. So how will you be satisfying those individuals? You'll be satisfying by providing them the required amount of documents. And how will you be keeping them informed? You'll be keeping them informed by providing the relevant information that has been required by these stakeholders. Again, so this is how the stakeholder theory basically work. Again, strategic planning, there should be a careful planning looking at the dimensions of the decisions. Through, though it may take long, but 
there uh, there will be long term benefit and success for the business as they build on a stakeholder satisfaction level. So although it will take some time, it will take some time to you know build up the satisfaction, right? But at the end of the day, once you start getting that satisfactory level, you will be in a position to identify your problematic areas. See, you guys are about to become the leaders of the company. So you have to take strategic plan. Your strategic plan can be harsh and your strategic plan can be the people's plan. Now, what do you understand by the people's plan? People's plan means the plan that the people or individual is going to be like, liking, but they it may not be beneficial for the overall uh, financial part of the company. However, there can be plans which is also known as a plan which may be uh, devastating for the individuals who are associated with the plan but it can go great in terms of financial capabilities or financial upbringing of the company. So you need to look at the area of very reliability difficulty for responsible leaders. So what are the difficulties that a responsible leader might be facing? It would be difficult for all the leaders to display enhance the level of responsibility towards the every aspect of society. So it is difficult for the leader to display the enhanced level of responsibility. You cannot be a responsible citizen. You cannot be a responsible leader at every single point of time. You cannot be a responsible leader at every single point of time. You try your level best to be a responsible one. But at the end, you cannot be a responsible one for every single stakeholder. So you try, you try every decision that you are taking can become a compromise as well. So if, let's suppose if I'm trying to keep him satisfied, let's suppose the, the other party of the stakeholder might be in a compromising situation. So we will be evaluating each and every individual on the basis of interest and on the basis of power that this specific stakeholder is having and this specific stakeholder does not possess. Example given in this article cover a responsible leader in supermarket. So I, I assume, I mean, uh, they may ask a scenario relating to supermarket as well. So again, okay. Industry can be a supermarket industry, or even if they want, don't want to go through the supermarket industry, they might replicate it with a green grocery market industry, a vegetable industry. Green grocery industry may be taken into account. So these are the factors that you should consider. Professional organization like accountancy firm, there have been no question up till now regarding the accountancy firm. So I assume that they may give you. So this time, predictability of industry seems to be quite prominent. And uh, assuming they, they may ask you about a supermarket industry, they may ask you about the accounting firm or an automobile industry. So please make. You know, yes, on the area of Yes, under in 10 percent. So all these three areas can easily be listed. For example, they may give you a scenario in which a green grocery industry is working in the economic, uh, let's suppose, well-being, and they are buying all green groceries within the local consumer or from the local supplier or from the village, village area. So this can help you in, you know, identifying the CSR activity. There are chances that they may ask you a question relating to CSF and KPIs. There are chances that they may ask you a question relating to CSF and KPIs. CSF is critical success factor and KPI are key performance indicators. Ah, 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 you can go through those topics. more topic of ice cream. Simple problem. Don't overburden in revising rather than practice. My viewpoint is rather than practicing, you are overburdening or you are spending half of your day in revising and half of your day in practice. So that is something which in with the first half is being said. So that is my point of concern. Don't overburden and revise. Don't start revising each and everything again and again. Mm -hmm. 
जो मैंने सीक्वेंस लगाया वो आपने आपके सीरीज में पहले सीसी कर दी लेकिन वो सितंबर 2018 में वो इस वजह से बिकॉज़ दैट इज द मोस्ट इजीएस्ट वन इन ऑर्डर टू बूट अप कॉन्फिडेंस व्हेन देन आई अगेन आई ट्राई टू बिंग योर कॉन्फिडेंस डाउन बट इफ यू हैव सी दैट स्पेसिफिक थिंग इज फॉर द इंडिविजुअल हु आर गोइंग टू लुक एट द YouTube चैनल सो you know why i have given you this uh, answer is because you know there are many people who will be attempting first question after this workshop so there are students who are going for self study maybe mm-hmm. or they may be studying by through the youtube channel so what they are going to do they are going to do their first question after uh, this workshop so once they have gone through this workshop uh, and they are going to start first question so they need confidence but for you as you have done at least two to three questions up till now by your own self and you have done two to three questions with me as well accumulatively in these workshops and before that we have done one single question in three classes so you know that you have gone through the first part or first step of practicing so for you guys i would rather suggest that let's suppose if you are if you are if you are under confident right now follow that sequence <coughs> But if you feel like okay, I know something related to practice. So what you can do, you can follow the sequence of attempting the last one first, and then going back to the previous one. A best student will be who attempts all of this, but that is not humanly possible. I guess. Or is it? At least do one stretch. One stretch. Three, three, three and one. Maybe one, maybe you can do at least do one specimen. As such, me. But if see the examiner has explicitly stated that I might ask you calculation related to rows, current asset ratio, NPV, IRR. बट माई सजेशन इज दैट गो इन टू अ लाइब्रेरी बिकॉज यू नो यू कैन सी ओवर हेयर दिस हमिंग नॉइस एंड समन इज एंटरिंग इन टू दिस रूम क्या कर रहे हो Then all these factors are prevalent over here. What you can do is either you can sit into TSS library and attempt your mock exam, or you, if you have your own room, what you can do you can close your room for four hours, start attempting the mock. Actual paper. Okay, let's move forward. Then it says difficulty for a responsible leader. So, what are the difficulties for a responsible leader? It will be difficult for all leaders to display an enhanced level of responsibility towards every aspect of the society. Example given in this article is of a supermarket and a professional accounting firm, like an uh, a, a professional organization like an accounting firm. Supermarket. For example, a supermarket chain could display greater responsibility towards supplier by paying them on time, particularly up uh, far upstream. Far upstream means where you are getting your raw material from. Are you prominent enough to identify the uh, ethical part or relating to the suppliers as well? Are you compromising your profit from by buying from ethical suppliers? 
who are not using child labor, who are not creating pollution, who are not using old machinery, who are not using, who are not polluting the environment or preventing carbon footprints. In the supply chain, educating them on environmentally friendly farming techniques. For example, I did an uh, audit for Alpers company. And what they do is they train their farmers on occasional basis. They have quarterly trainings for their farmers. They train their farmers on every single quarter. And they are also providing them educational standards relating to pharma, farming industry. So this is something which is, you know, which a good leader should present. They are training their farmers, they are bringing their farmers to priority and they are investing huge amount of money because that the money is being uh, audited and they are investing huge amount of money in training their farmers. In fact, they are sending their farmers to Lahore University of um, Farming and Technology. And in that specific university, they are being trained and they are being given, uh, let's say they are being given education relating to the farming, modern technology of animal farming as well. So this is a good leader's technique and assisting in the provision of the new technology to aid their techniques. So how is the milking process being linked and how to take care of their cattle farm, each and everything will be built by a good leader. Professional organizations such as accounting or investment firm might display element of a responsible leader, but a professional organization such as accounting or investment firm might display element of responsible leadership by creating enhanced safeguard for its uh, staff and its clients, and by ensuring that the staff well-being is emphasized in organizations traditionally known, known as long working hours. See why Google company is regarded as one of the best uh, company in, in, in relation to employees uh, turnover ratio. Because they know how to cater their staff. They know how to consider their staff to be an asset for the company. They know how staff are being built. They know what we mean by financial and non-financial benefits. They know how to provide them with bridge benefits. These are the factors that enhance the staff well-being. These are the factors that are going to create well-being for the staff. Again, four days working week, an example of responsible leadership. In France, do you know that it is a four days working week and each day they work only for five hours? And their efficiency is more than the majority of developed nations around the world. The leader is <laughs> Right now, I myself is working for more than seven days. Cumulatively, if I talk about myself, I'm working for more than seven days. So, you know, I said, uh, but I'm, I'm working for more than seven days. Why? Because I'm working for more than 12 hours per day. So this means that I'm working for at least eight to nine days in actual. In actual, if I'm working for eight to nine days, comparatively, the efficiency of CC individuals are way better than the efficiency of Pakistan. I don't mean class, including teaching. Yes. Teaching is actually not a work. Yeah. So yes, France, France an individual responsible leadership can be seen to bring benefit to the organization. For example, some organization and even countries have introduced a four-day working week without <laughs> implementing a pay cut for the workers. In fact, to your utmost surprise, many banking industry in Pakistan has also announced four-day working and the fifth day is taken as work from home. Many banking industry have introduced this after COVID. And honestly speaking, your efficiency increases. I would love if my organization allowed me to, you know, let my trainees go for four days, or let my trainees work for four days and give them an off for the uh, fifth one, or maybe work from home for the fifth one. Honestly, their efficiency and their motivation is going to increase to an intense level. How many of you are working for four days in a bank for maybe in any sort of industry? Four days. 
It should be changed. 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 It I will not be able to tap in the market that is outside Karachi, number one. And those individuals who would want to be studying online, they will have to come for physical classes. And if, let's suppose, these physical classes capacities have filled, so I'll have to make another batch. So this means twice uh, in a specific attempt, I'll be teaching the SBL examination. This means that more than 200 hours are being invested in one single examination for which, if I'm investing right now 100 hours, so I'm getting that same amount of revenue and I'm getting that same amount of quantity being taken out of this examination. So this is how the examination or this is how the smart leadership technologies work. It says some of the organizations involved have found increase in productivity. One large technology company have reported 40% increase in. And honestly, after the end of this specific year, you can ask the banking industry, they must have increased their efficiency to at least to by 120%, or maybe uh, uh, till 120%. They must have increased their efficiency by 20%. That is fallen or sure for those individuals who are right now working at home or going for work from home. So, this is a very objective manner of you know increasing the efficiency. And in today's world, after COVID and where we are all being given with such opportunity. And um that time is not way too far in which we might shrink our physical premises and we may go for virtual uh, assistance for our customers. And I assume that these call centers will be the first place to introduce such a methodology. They are going to install a PTCL or maybe a phone at your home and they are going to connect each and every one through a device or maybe a software and ultimately you will be in a better position to work for these call centers straight away from your house. But for that, you need specific good homes in order to, you know, encourage work from home methodology. Greater staff retention and satisfaction in the long term. <clears throat> Greater staff retention means uh, the staff are going to be retained. Uh, employee turnover ratio is reducing and the long term satisfaction of the staff will be the staff will feel more motivated. There will be more satisfaction level for the staff. Uh, Long-term objective of the staff are being achieved. And ultimately, uh, the retention rate of the staff. 
organization implementing this have also reported enhanced environmental rating. Yes. See, if I'm doing four days work from home, HPL, uh, basically the organization in which you are working right now, uh, they, one of their managers reported that they were able to cut down the cost by 3%, their um, electricity cost by 3%. And they have also reported this in the previous quarter. They have also reported this as a CSR activity because they have identified that one day working from home will create less pollution in comparison to five days working from office. And that has been reported by one of the managers of HBL, not by an individual who is another. And they have said that 3% of the operational costs relating to the heating and lighting charges are being reduced by introducing the methodology of one day work from home. So your efficiency keep on increasing and the ability to attract the talent into the organization. So obviously, how many of you would want to work in an organization which is offering five days from office or four days from office? And again, uh, four days from office plus with the same salary package. Honestly speaking, I would love to do this. And in fact, you all are going to go into such an organization. With Gondor, leadership isn't a standalone area. This is not something which, you, which can be done in isolation. It's not something which, is, which can be done in isolation. For a responsible leader, the individuals who are being led should also be responsible for. So it says, responsible leadership cannot be considered a standalone area in the role of strategic business leader. There are close links with the strategic planning, culture, ethics, sustainability, and in terms of public value. See, if you consider me as your leader, you should have that impact of considering me and looking into my eyes and then going by the roadmap that we are providing. you. So you should have that strategic plan with you. You should have that culture that, okay, if you accept me as a leader, you should try to abide by the rules that I have made for you. If you accept me as a leader, you should have a sustainable growth. And you should have a, a sense of, uh, let's suppose, the responsibility over me. And you, you may be making me as an accountable person. As well. For example, I always say that I'm responsible for my result. Even if you are passing, that is because of me. And if you are failing, that is also because of me. So I'm responsible for my business. If let's suppose uh, 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 after giving your SBL examination and if you clear it, it is 110% my contribution. And if let's suppose if you're not able to pass this, then it is 10% my contribution. And we should look at these areas. Do you get this? I like individuals who like it. good humor, but I don't think so anyway. Okay. <laughs> Where accountant fits in this concept. Now, it's you guys are going to fit in the concept of a good leadership. A key role of an accountant particularly is to ensure that the company is not simply focused on financial objectives, but rather on the purpose and implementation, other key matters, and provide evidence of a positive impact of responsible decisions. See, an accountant is not someone who is going, in today's world, an accountant is not someone who is just looking at the, uh, the financial side. An accountant is not someone who is just looking at the uh, historic side. An accountant is not someone who is just looking at increasing the amount of profitability. But methodologies of satisfying the different forms of stakeholders. Integrated reporting, one of your favorite topics mm -hmm. and examiner's favorite topic. Why am I saying that? Because this is a difficult one. Uh, same as the case, uh, this topic is also a favorite one in the SBR examination, I guess. Mm -hmm. And uh, same is the case in the SBR examination, but it is more over a theoretical topic in SBR and somewhat a uh, quantitative topic in SBR. Yeah. We just have to define all six factors, or we have to all six factors. Part of the features to put See, there might be a question uh, stating, uh, suggest the methodology of using the integrated thinking. Now, this question is majority of times wrongly being built by the uh, majority of candidates. Why? See, integrated reporting leads you to integrated thinking. For example, there might be a scenario in which the examiner is asking you to apply integrated thinking. 
Now, how can you apply integrated thinking? For example, it says the first vector is the financial capital. Now, how to apply the financial capital? You are going to write financial capital is the baseline of all other sort of capital. This means that a company which is financially viable company and having a better cash flow can generate a different or uh, optimization results from all other options that are available for investing in regard with the financial capabilities of the company. So what I decided to do is I first defined what financial capital is and then I connected with integrated thinking. Now, integrated thinking is that this financial capital is not only going to help you in providing better revenue generating opportunities, but it will also help you in identifying the environmental sustainability needs. So what I did is I transferred my financial capital to financial benefit as well as my financial capital to environmental benefit. Now, let's look at the manufactured capital. If I get that manufactured, what is manufactured capital? Manufactured capital means that buying machinery, which will be buying capital investment, which will be used for producing consumer goods. Buying capital investment, which will be used for producing consumer goods. If these consumer goods are being satisfied, we will not only be able to create value for money for the consumers, but we will also be providing some sustainability in a regard with the societal impacts of fulfilling the desire of consumer demand. So thinking is to use that capital into something which is going to give you a direct objective as well as an indirect. Thinking, mindset. Yes. Mindset ki ye cheez can benefit you directly and indirectly. For example, let me give you an example. This is a watch, right? It has an emergency number. It's a watch. It has an emergency number. The direct benefit of buying this watch is that I can flex that whatever I'm doing right now, I can show it off. And okay, I have bought a watch. Relating, uh, it's a series seven watch of iPhone or let's call Apple company, and I bought it. It's a very expensive one, and I look good when I'm wearing this watch. It's a direct benefit, but an indirect benefit will be, or integrated thinking will be, to connect the direct benefit to the indirect one. If let's suppose I am in an uneasy situation, this watch is going to dial an emergency number, and this can save my life. This is it. Connecting your direct benefit. To something which is related to it in that something which is so I would rather suggest connecting your financial benefit to your environmental benefit, connecting your financial benefit to your societal benefit, connecting your financial benefit to your employee oriented benefit, connecting your financial benefit to your overall stakeholders community. Let's do one. Tell me, manufactured capital, what will be direct benefit? Reducing more, getting more profit. Indirect benefit, satisfying the consumer's demand. Human capital, what is your direct benefit? More strategically important human beings are being hired. We have individuals who are going to contribute or become an asset for the company. Indirect benefit providing job opportunity to the overall society. Staff morale. Staff morale. Providing help in the overall economic GDP. Providing job opportunities to jobless individuals. Do you get this? So this is how integrated reporting is connected to integrated thinking. Now, if the question is about integrated thinking, you have to do this. And SBL examiner have once asked about such. Integrated thinking and benefits. Same. Advantages or benefit of integrated thinking is again the same as the integrated reporting. For example, if I'm going to use the financial benefit, this is going to help the society in upbringing the overall financial structure of the company as well as upbringing the overall GDP for the economy. Let's suppose if I'm going to buy manufactured capital, this will help the company in producing more and more products 
and it will also give benefit of making the company a tech or uh, making the country a tech oriented company. If I'm investing more and more in human capital, this will increase the human skill set, but this will in also increase the overall training needs of the individual. So you have to give benefit in the regard with the stakeholders point. Of or other indicated reporting, they would have the narrative. You would have the Again, other Abka, if the question is of uh, let was 12 marks, 10 marks, then you'll have to stay till six hours. But if the question is of 20 marks, 18 marks, then you'll have to go beyond six capital. For example, providing something additional means that providing short analysis, special analysis will give a transparency benefit to you. Compared to benefit. 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 See, it is dependent upon the situation. If the situation is that it includes all benefits, so you'll have to define all. All capitals, so you'll have to define all. See, again, if the question is of 10 to 12 marks, you will define only six capital and direct benefit relating to those six capital if the benefit are of, are of integrated reporting. Direct and indirect benefit if the benefit is of integrated thinking. However, if the question is of 18 to 20 marks, you will define six capital and all other factors that are included in integrated which means sort analysis is also an integrated reporting benefit. Uh, the providing pestle analysis is also a way in which the integrated reporting will be done. You'll get this. So this is how we structure the entire history. Let's just completely uh, move forward and uh, finish with this, and then we'll be looking into other pictures as well. I, I would rather do today in today's class after completion of this specific uh, article, I'll read one of the examiner's uh, answer Sorry, one of the examiner's comment uh, of a specific uh, question of an entire paper so that we can have an insight and then we'll be moving towards the second article and then we'll be uh, going through the remaining puppet uh, and uh, balance code kind of things. Uh, indicated reporting can assist with uh, this, although it is important to recognize that all the example of responsible leadership will have a measurable impact individually, but cumulatively they contribute to the better organizational culture and performances. So this is how the case study works. In case study on the car manufacturing uh, manufacturers to understand the responsible leader. I don't know why, but it is an educated guess. Keep three industries in your mind. Number one is the supermarket, which has low chances of coming. Number two is the car industry, which has very high chances of being tested. And number three is accountancy firm, which has the most chances of being tested similarly to the car manufacturing. So this is something that is important. Right? Summary of the key point, uh, just, just look at this. Involving stakeholders in the decisions made. So we'll involve certain stakeholders in all the decisions that are being made. How can how can you be a responsible leader? Involve all stakeholders. Uh, you can involve employees, you can involve suppliers, you can involve customers, you can involve uh, organizational owners, you can involve managers, you can involve each and everyone. Same <laughs> Considering human and environmental impact when making supply chain decisions. See, not only the financial impact. Think of body shop company. Whenever you are going through the upstream or downstream supply chain management system. Think of body shop company. What they are doing is they are claiming that okay, our product is charging premium pricing. But why? Because our product includes all those manufacturing sites that are not using child labor, our product includes all those manufacturing capabilities in which we are not polluting the environment to a harmful manner. And this is how the key individual impact or the societal impact takes place. Implementing end of life vehicle processes. End of life vehicle processes means, can anyone identify? 
you know it very well. You must have gone through such a process in uh, IE 16. It includes a cost. Yes, dismantling cost. What is the dismantling cost? Once you once you are done with the extraction of coal, you dismantle and you make that specific land into a position which can be reused. Rather than just throwing each and everything into it and finishing it out, it's a dismantling cost that we normally include in our uh, in our uh, total cost of a non current asset. Then behaving in a socially responsible manner. You have to behave in a socially responsible manner, providing public value and addressing societal problems. You will be providing public values. You will be assessing societal problems. Societal problems means you are not only going to deal with the vehicles that are, see, for example, I was looking at a blog of uh, Junaid Akram and to be for utmost surprise, he identified that made in their country, the maid, the person who is, you know, looking mm -hmm. after their home or caretaker of their house is using an electronic vehicle which is producing 0% carbon emission. The housekeeper of their country's home is using an electronic vehicle, is using an EV which is producing 0% carbon emission. Even the richest person of our country is not using that specific electronic vehicle which is producing 0% carbon. So again, developing a socially responsible culture throughout the organization. See, socially responsible culture is very important. Mm -hmm. In today's world, a good leader is someone who knows how green consumers are to be dealt. And a person who should convert all consumers into green ones. I told you, Few days before, one of my students, he started his own brand of vegan products and he bought vegan nuggets. Vegan. And according to him, which tastes like chicken, but I don't think so. But again, they, they tried, you know, convincing me to transfer myself into um, such a product which may be used by the green consumers. Always behaving ethically, so you will have to always behave in an ethical and socially responsible manner. Case study summary. Over the long term, the organization will develop a reputation for the responsibility which will encourage existing and potential staff, consumers, and community alike. As reputation increases, more suppliers and investors will want to be uh, involved with the organization. Although in our country, there is no such thing as providing loan to ethically sound uh, companies, but in uh, outside Pakistan or in outside world, there are loan providing companies who are providing loan on less markup to organizations that are ethically more sound and less markup loans are provided to organizations that are ethically more well mannered or they have contributed somewhat in the society. So you can either oh. it to continue to be successful even as it goes. I'm giving you a break for five minutes. I need to have a talk for five minutes. Okay, uh, let's resume now. Let's resume. Now we are looking at the examiner's report. Are you trying to buy it? No, I have not. I have not given it. 
Okay, let's let's uh, read the examiner's report. This examiner, this examiner's report is related to this examiner's report is related to uh, the smart way question. I assume that you all must have gone through the smart way question, and I would want to read this. The examiner team chair of the way this is just a general. I would want to read some of the specific areas of uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, examiner's report. Kindly go through this. The examination consists of four hour exam with a single compulsory section comprising of five different tasks, more with more than one element about an international clothing retail company. Right? So, they, this is about an international clothing retail company, Smartware. The marking scheme include 80 technical marks for the correct use of the application uh, of technical syllabus knowledge. For every element of content, answers need to be applied to the case material. Simply re, re graduating the root learned fact will not affect any marks in the strategic profession. So you are, if you are road learning, you are not going to gain marks uh, in the strategic profession. In addition, the marking scheme includes 20 marks for professional skill and competence. These particular skills uh, examined in the requirement should be evident how candidate answer the question. Also, candidate may draw on other skills as well when answering. When awarding, when awarding, the okay. Uh, when awarding professional skill mark, markers will look primarily at professional skill being tested in the question requirement. But they will also look at the general professionalism that the candidate is not under I have been uh, saying this again and again, so you know it very well. Exam performance. Now, this is something which is important. Most candidates answer the question in order. Where they did not, they appear to be leaving one question. 
Now the examiner is of the view that you might forget answering a question. And obviously, this is a blend, not a mistake. In fact, you are trying yourself to, you know, go into such a situation. Which they like least <coughs> till the end. Can you deal with answers but not in numerical order of the examination? Tended not to appreciate the implicit sequencing of events in the case and so produce answers that were more theoretical, academic than professional candidates are advised to answer the requirement in order. So you are advised to answer the requirement in order. Now, even if you don't want to write your answers in order, I have a solution for this. Write your answer in whatever order you want to write, and at the end, what you can do is you can sequence it out. Copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste your answers. For example, you are done with your answer one end, then you are doing your answer. No, that is uh, again. That, I Huh, you can do this. Simple. So it's up to you. It's up to you, but it's better to answer the uh, examination and sequence, right? <coughs> then it says again, candidates are advised to answer the requirement in order. So some future exam may follow a more developed timeline than this one or have progressive related question requirement. So it says that, okay, now in this, it was not a connected one, but in future examination, there may be a scenario in which question number 1B is connected with question number 1A. So if you are attempting 1B without attempting 1A, you might end up in writing a long answer as well. Sequence is, huh? Some of the candidates they normally have and you know, um, have an instead of you know solving the question according to, to their own preferences. So that is normally <laughs> I'm saying this once again. If you want, do this, but make sure that you leave some space and then start with the last one and then write the first question above. This is how can we see in computer based examination you have a choice of leaving space and writing. So you have written the fourth one, go. We, uh, we, uh, we go uh, on to the uh, let's put line before the fourth exam and start writing first, second, third, and then last the one, the fourth one. You have already read. So that's up to you. In computer based examination, there's a flexibility. So I don't think so that this applies on a computer based exam. In most cases, those candidates who failed this exam did not did so because of lack of comprehension of the question, lack of analytic skills, failure to respond to the exam question in a professional and commercial manner. And simply not understanding what the question asked them to do. Some of the candidates who failed gave lengthy and over elaborative answers, which failed to clearly, which failed to clearly articulate the relevant points required by the question. So if you are failing to read the requirement, you are going to fail the entire set of questions. Again, technical marks. To gain each technical marks, candidate need to make points which addresses the specific requirement of the question, considering the scope of the answer required and what the question verb used indicates should be provided. Now, from today onwards, I'm going to keep on sharing some stuff on your group. Don't panic out. That stuff will be general stuff. For example, if I'm going, I'm, I might share some um, verbs that are used in question. Although I have shared a, a handout which included some of the most important work. That is not only for the SBL examination, but for other examinations. Don't overburden yourself that, okay, another handout, this means something new is to be done. No. General. Now I'm going to share some voice notes of mine relating to examiner's comment. But don't overburden yourself. Once you have went to, let's suppose, go to your bed, rather than talking to someone, what you can do is keep on listening to those voice notes. And you will end up in, you know, passing your examination and then someone is also going to be happy at the end of the day. Right? Yeah. <laughs> 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 
Apply to the organization and its environment featured in the case study. You have to apply each and everything. Are specific to the decision or situation covered in the question. Show the reader marker why the point is being made. Its significance in the circumstances described. So make sure that you follow these requirements. Um, another thing that I would want to see. Up to two technical marks are available for often a well-developed point. I want to show the general guidelines of at least two to three papers. I want to show general comments of examiner on at least two to three papers so that you can have a better insight. Um, question, first question is let's look at this. Including element of pestle framework, namely environmental and legal, they were not referred in the case material. In fact, they attempted to fit an answer to the framework rather than the uh, other way around. So this is something that you can fit around. And if you want, you can use the model in full. However, even if you use the model of sort, you can do this, but your answer should be on assumption based. Writing a wrong answer in legal will lead you to wrong marks. Okay. Sorry, writing a wrong answer in uh, environmental. I guess environmental was not given. So writing wrong point in environmental. See, for example, you found out three points in political. So what you decided to do is to write two points in political and taking out one point and writing it in environmental or legal. That is not going to gain you marks. Right? Let's look at question number four. Go on for assumption, write a generic answer. Write for example, yes or no. What happened? If you write a generic answer, you can write a generic answer. But if you write a generic answer, you can write a generic answer. You can write a generic answer. You can write a generic answer. You लेकिन अगर आप ई को जनरली क्लिक करो तो कम मैं कंपैटिबल एडवांटेज उससे प्रोफेशनल मार्क तो अफेक्ट करेंगे ना नहीं मैं आपको कंपैटिबल एडवांटेज अगर आपने लिख दिया जनरल ई शुड बी वेल वेरी क्विकली इन ऑर्डर टू गेन मोमेंटम इन दी और लीगल नो एडमिशन बेस बस एक्सेलेंट ठीक है लेट्स लुक एट क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर बी क्वेश्चन नंबर फाइ and most had a company note. Just look at this one. However, the quality of these varied considerably, with some slides containing ma masses of text and other one or two basic bullet points. Now I'm validating my uh, viewpoint that I've presented to you. Candidates should be able to communicate this way with ease, so it is suspected that many answers were rushed due to poor time management. Many of the slides produced focus incorrectly on integrated reporting rather than integrated behavior. <laughs> Integrated reporting taken to an extreme level to connect your strategies. Decision making of the company's integrated. How to connect the integrated? See, this is the answer that, honestly speaking, when this question was not tested, I gave my exam my students about integrated reporting. But in that specific point of time, there was a one-liner uh, question given in the P3 examination which related to the integrated thing. So we attempted that question. And specifically, it mentioned that, okay, integrated thinking and integrated reporting should be done. Then I decided that, okay, what should be the integrated thing? So we took out a slide and we made integrated thinking. And I, uh, in my workshop, I decided to teach integrated thinking and integrated thinking. This is the same thing that what I'm telling you guys right now. 
Integrated reporting six capital is connected in a way where decision making is being dealt and indirect benefit is attained, which is known as integrated. Again, integrated thinking. Unfortunately, many candidates appear to have little or no idea about what integrated thinking was. So, marks were often limited to applying common sense. Candidate are encouraged to check their, their that their syllabus knowledge is complete before sitting in the exam. Mm -hmm. Okay. Question number five B. Candidates seem to have a fair grasp on underlining slavery knowledge. However, the candidate struggle in applying to the situation. A good example is where the six capital are discussed. No. And generic definition were provided. You have to provide generic definition of reporting six capital. This is what I told you. You are going to define this capital and then connect with your decision making. Or application given with no context or application. Therefore, the issue was correctly identified, but then the answer was not applied. So you have to apply an answer to the given scenario. The weakest candidate only listed the six indicated reporting capital where only the best candidate were able to show how these are clearly linked and how sustainable long-term value can, how sustainable long-term value, this means how decision-making can be done. <laughs> <laughs> there was little indication in most answers of being targeted to the specific audience, specific audience identified in the question requirement. This was hey, hey. this was very disappointing as this person could have scored higher marks. However, it appears, however, it appears. That lack of time was major. See, again and again, the examiners of the view that lack of time you need to take. So, the only one way of completing this is start doing practicing. You will end up at six hours in the first one, you'll end up at five hours, you'll end up at four, and then there will be a time that you will end up at three hours and 20 or 30 minutes. Sir, I got to do in like tension on Key problems identified with the question. Answers in brief notation form are not at all due to poor time management. Notation form, what do you mean by notation form? Pointers. Yes, sir. Notation form. Notations. You are giving your notations.
Okay, please, please, please. Repetition of point made in part is repetition of point made in part A. Even, even though even they were more appropriate in this part of the task, running out of time. Overall, I was I was saying nothing better. Overall, the statement of Kennedy answer of March 2022 today was in line with the other reason today. The biggest weakness were lack of debt and explanation in the points candidate made and failing to consider the context of so this means that if you are not connecting with the context of the company if you are not connecting to the case if you are not connecting with the context this means that you are ending up nowhere but a wrong answer the most competent look at this the most competent candidate integrated it is not integrated reporting. It says the most common candidate integrated link. It is not integrated reporting. It is just a word of integrated. Yeah, come on. <laughs> the most competent candidate integrated and used information. Integrated means connected yeah. and used information <laughs> from the case study material throughout their answer. <laughs> Thank you.
It was apparent that some candidates had better policies. Please focus, focus. It was apparent that some candidates had not used and assimilated the guidance and resources produced by HEC for SBL. It is worth remembering that this is an important part of exam preparation. It is an important part of exam preparation and you need to go through the examination guidance that they have given. Okay, so I guess you have gone through this as well. Uh, let's read another one. Let's read. Uh, SBL June 2021. Let's just look at this general comment of 2021 as well. Please choke that out. Yes, I am. Uh, thank you, Peter, for notifying. Let's move forward. <laughs> yeah, please, please, please keep quiet. <coughs> Examiner's report. Oh, there. <coughs> the examining team share the observation. Obviously, these are the general, these are general comments. Exam, oh, please, please, please. Exam performance. Overall, the standard candidate answer resulted in one of the poorest sitting in SBL so far. Stronger candidate integrated and use the content of the case study. See, one way of passing this exam, the only way of passing this exam here is to integrate the case study. You have to open it, you have to connect. This, day, this is the thing that I am saying that you have to you have to go through really? at least five to six pass papers in order to get more no, amount no, of content. No. Once you are done with those five to six pass papers, trust me, Shaul, you will be in a position not to forget your exhibits and the exam. See connection. One thing that I normally suggest to my students is when they are attempting their SBA exam in a final exam preparation or maybe in the final examination. Make sure that you keep on writing the name of company in your answer the given. For example, NCCP said this, NCCP will be going through this, NCCP have hired us, NCCP will be having an evaluation, NCCP is going through fraud investigation, NC, you know, this is how you can connect to the case. It's a wonderful exhibit. Connection me on Jesse, yesterday we did a question in which the entire exhibit related to one specific exhibit, but the inflation rate was given in the above exhibit. So you have to, you know, read the entire question once and for all. There is no need. Kya the paper is not the same. The paper is not the same. The paper is not the same. not going to write your examination practice in your home, studying in four hours, writing in four hours, you will not be able to complete your exam in four hours. For that, you have to practice at least six questions and try to bring your writing into four hours so that you can end up in, you know, getting good answers. See, what you can do is rather than uh, reading it thoroughly or rather than skimming through the exam, what you can do is rather than investing 60 minutes, make 55 minutes of minutes in reading. Right? Don't cut down the reading hours. Now, one more thing that I uh, encountered historically with some candidates 
Once there was an SBR examination which only had eight papers. Right? Eight papers to read. Now, be very smart, guys. <laughs> One of my candidates said, Sir, I read the entire paper in 30 minutes. Because you said that you have to read the paper in 60 minutes, I started reading once again. <laughs> <laughs> However, I ended up in solving only three questions, although I knew the fourth one. Then you use your hundred questions. So you know you have to be you have to be very smart in this. Don't don't, don't make some such pathetic mistake that okay, sir, if the question is of uh, let's about seven to eight exhibits, or maybe of five exhibits. Other uh, exhibit eight and spending time in highlighted will need copy paste. Sorry, spend time with that. Highlight. But highlight is for some financial important information. For example, you are highlighting inflation rate. Now you know there will be an information. I don't remember the inflation rate. Okay, so I need to go through each and every exhibit to find out where the inflation rate was given. So what I can do is okay. I have highlighted an inflation rate and I can easily identify that in exhibit number four in inflation rate. So normally I suggest that highlight is used in those information which are in terms of financials and given it in between the theoretical portion of the exhibit. For example, there are five paragraphs. Within that five paragraph, there is a line written that profitability of the company declined by 20%. You can highlight that because now, in order to identify that line once again, you'll have to read and find out the exhibit. So that will be an easy option for you. Or there are 10 different paragraphs given in an exhibit. And in between those lines, it, it says that the inflation rate of the of country is 7%. Now, once you are read with the once you are done with the paragraph, once you are done, and you have started writing and you want to know, okay, there was something related to inflation, but I don't remember that information. Let me find it out. So it will be very easy for you if you have highlighted. Any financial information in between the theoretical paragraphs. So I request to highlight financial information in between the theoretical paragraphs and for other different information, what you can do is you can copy paste in your exam uh, scenario or good See, identification of risk obviously will not vary. You cannot say that, okay, the risk is that the door was not closed and you start writing. The risk is that the door was not closed and there was no guard. Identification of risk shall be the same, right? So they are not going to award you some marks on that specific identity. The major concern was its impact and its control measures, right? So identification is not something which you have done on your own. Identification will remain remains to the same thing that was already been given. However, there might be situations that the examiner is asking to identify the risk yourself. And in between the lines, there have been just been given. So over that, you can replicate your work, you can identify your work, but you cannot change the risk. For example, it says that the surveillance cameras are installed. However, there is no monitoring room where the Mr. Bob was. There was no monitoring room, and this, well, let's suppose, the responsibility is given to Mr. Bob. So, how you can replicate this risk is that proper surveillance uh, control structure is not being implemented. Now you can identify the impact that due to the fact that proper surveillance cameras are not being installed, along with this, there is no proper control. A monitoring room being developed, so this can have an unwanted access to the individuals into the company and leading to some accidents which may have financial as well as non financial consequences. And the control measure will be that we need to have proper surveillance cameras being installed, there should be a proper monitoring room being uh, taken into account by the company, and a proper investigator or a proper control monitor should be hired. And there should be a proper control measurement being taken into account, and there should be quarterly report or maybe some report should be made at the end of the day in order to identify the control weaknesses and in order to evaluate the, if these uh, implications on the controls are being working effectively or not. Okay, for example, exhibit usually cameras are not installed. 
If you end up saying, sir, I had the answer in my mind of question number four, but I was not able to replicate it on paper just because of time constraint, will I be given marks on question number four? You will be given a slap on your question. Mm -hmm. Honestly, you are not going to gain any specific marks on thinking rather than on writing. Okay, now this is an important part. It was apparent that some candidate had not used the learning support produced by ACCA for SBL, particularly in the following. So there are learning support by ACCA as well, but I don't suggest that you can go through them now because we have already gone through the past papers and specimen exam, examiner's approach article, uh, the importance of effective communication. Uh, that is the handout that I have given to you. The importance of effective communication, the verb uh, handout is the importance of effective communication. Strategy business leader, 10 things to learn from September 2018. This is basically the uh, CC's company, and you can because it was the first examination. So we have identified 10 things to learn from ACC SBL exam. Various videos and article on how to plan to take SBL exam. You know, uh, again, you should not go through that. Now you what you need to do, you need to just go through the things that I've done with you. At the start of the exam, candidate should spend sufficient time analyzing all requirements and then reading and assimilating the information contained in the case study exhibit. This approach will help them to structure their answer around the requirement and use the relevant scenario content to develop their answer. Often, answer fail to make sufficient re reference to exhibit. One thing, one thing that I feel good about ICAP is. That I can provide reading time to their examiner, to their candidates, and they have identified that during that specific reading time, you cannot write mm -hmm. anything on it. So, by hook or by crook, examiner, the candidate will have to invest that specific time. Mm -hmm. और रेंज ऑफ मटीरियल कंटेन इन दी एक Some answers also demonstrated that the candidate had not read the exhibit sufficiently, uh, sufficiently clear, carefully, and uh, there were six exhibits which comprise of the background. So I don't think so that we should go through them again. Uh, I hope so. You have all. I hope so. You have all done this. Yes, sir. And uh, now let me move forward. Very done. That's Uh, let's let's just go through one more point. Maybe 
should we go through one more comment or should we go through one more comment? Now, last thing, last thing, I guess, uh, we will uh, we'll call it a day. I'm uh, giving an overview on culture as well, uh, as well as the uh, profit and balance scorecard. Okay. So, what do you understand by the word profit? Oh, sorry, balance scorecard. What actually is balance scorecard? Yeah, okay. It's a balance scorecard is to balance each and every uh, impact a decision can have on in, uh, on an organization as well as on the overall stakeholders community. A balancing impact on all the overall stakeholders community. Let me show you what balance scorecard can be. Financial one more thing, one more thing. Make sure that you, you revise four line of defense at least once before going into your business. Four line of defense at least once. Employee, manager, internal order, external order. Four line of defense at least once before going into your business. It is something which is very important. Okay, let's let's just quickly go through. Let's just quickly go to bit of deep, deep, deep. Let's just quickly go through the. Balance scorecard. Basically, there are four different perspectives that every decision can have uh, on an organization. The first one is the financial perspective. The financial perspective is a perspective in which the organization. The first one is the financial perspective. The second one is the customer's perspective, learning and growth perspective, and internal process perspective. Now, let me talk something about the financial perspective. Every decision that an organization is going to undertake, it will have some financial implications. See, you know it very well. Accountants do not write entries relating to emotions. We do not write any entries relating to emotions. We write double entries, general entries relating to financials. So, every single thing will have some financial implications. Number one. Number two is customer's perspective. Every decision of yours is going to lead to customer satisfaction or dissatisfaction. For example, if the company is increasing the price of their already uh, already high-priced products, this is going to lead to customer dissatisfaction. Then it says the learning or growth perspective. Every decision that an organization is taking, they are going to make the employees be more learned. They are going to take, take the employees into a learning perspective and they are also going to make the organization learn about the uh, new areas and new era. And last, internal process perspective. Internal process perspective means the strength-oriented perspective and the weakness orientation of perspective. What processes are going to lead us towards our strengthening position being more strengthened? And what processes are going to lead us towards the weaking position into taking into account a more weaker one? So these are the areas where different decisions are going to lead to four different specific areas. These are the areas that are going to lead to four different parts. KPIs. Yes, KPIs are included with the CSF and the CSF are taken into account with the echo balance. Control, control, internal control. Process. How do we create value for shareholders? How do we uh, indulge our uh, employees? How do we increase growth and how do we create customer satisfaction? Of Yes, this is the same as F5.1. So you're not going to go to a, a, a this in much detail.
दूसरे आर्टिकल पे ना मैं यूट्यूब पे वीडियो डाल दूँ मैं तुम्हारे को दे दूंगा तुम पढ़ लेकिन आसान एक मैं डाल दूँ वीडियो भी बनाना आपके देश से हीट करके पढ़ा पढ़ा एक और मॉडल भी पढ़ा ओके वन मोर थिंग वन मोर थिंग वन मोर थिंग आई हैव फॉरवर्डेड एक आई गेस टू रिकॉर्डेड क्वेश्चंस यस्टरडे Two recorded questions yesterday. I have forwarded it on your group, so you can go through those two recorded questions. Time, time. I have put it there. Yes, sir. I have showed them. So don't go through them. Ah. Ah. एग्जामिनल Are there chances of passing this exam? So let me ask. <laughs> How the hell can it be possible that even one person of your answer is not matched with the exam? <laughs> you can drive car in two ways. You can drive car in two ways. One thing is that you can. You can sit. <laughs> you can drive car in two ways. One is by sitting inside the car, and the other one is someone else is sitting inside the car, and you are pushing it out from outside. So, आप यही वाली बात बता। कि आप बाहर से गाड़ी को धक्का लगा रहे हो, सर क्या गाड़ी आगे चलेगी चलेगी? लेकिन मंजर से पहुंचे कि नहीं? Yes, the car is going to drive. But will it lead you to fifty marks? No. How the hell is it possible that it's not even one percent of your answer is matching with the examiner's answer? One percent will get the pass. One percent is the limit. One percent. Okay. Now I am teaching you online students. I don't want to teach you all. Okay. Let's look at the. Let's. Other students might be doing more. Sixty percent of your answer is matching, and on the remaining two point, if you are giving justification, that means that eighty percent of your answer is correct. Good. Okay. Acha, uh, please, please, guys. Uh, now there are two three things that uh, I guess we should do this. Now. Rather than going through puppet model, I will send a voice note on puppet model. It's better not. Yeah. Yeah. Let's invest next five minutes in understanding what we're talking about. Right, right. See, change management states that there is a profit model, and profit model is all about considering change related to IT, people, processes, and organization. And now, if I say change, it means IT. Do IT systems support the business as required? 
So it means that okay, you are bringing change in your information technology system, but you do not have that infrastructure that is going to bring the change. So this means that change is and change is something which will not lead you to successful results, right? It says uh, or these several work around bottleneck in existence. What do you mean the bottleneck? Yeah, limiting resources. If you are bringing change, but your IT is a limited. So for example, I need five new employees, or I have hired five new trainees, and I'll be providing them work to do on set. But I have only one laptop. Then this means that there is no need of hiring five new employees because this is not going to bring you good answer to the change. Then what about people? Do they understand security requirement? Are they adequately involved in the design? Are they understanding the security requirement? Are they involving in the design? Do people know how to implement change? Do people are they accepting the change? Are you motivating them to accept the change? Will they will the change be accepted by these individuals? What do they think about the change? Then it says processes. What data are critical to the business processes? What knowledge is required to bring in about this change? If you want to bring change, how can you bring in change? What processes are required? What implementations are required? What processes are required? How to identify change? And how? what information is critical for this change? And last but not the least, the overall organization. The overall organization is the overall organization is what specific tasks, steps, and formal and informal rules have to be performed when responsible roles explicitly defined. Now let me look at that. See if you want to bring change. There are two ways. You try your level best. Uh, that organization should accept this change. You try motivating them. You tried in, uh, influencing them. You tried bringing that change, but there are individuals or bureaucracies who are not accepting this change. Then you can go with the harsh ways. In the harsh way, maybe that okay, we are not accepting the change. Then all those individuals who are going to accept the change, they are going to be within the organization. And all those individuals who are not accepting the change, they are going to leave the organization. So this is how the change management corporate model works. Now. In my handout, you can see. Just give me my handout. You can see. In my handout, it says that there are four different processes. Again, four different processes or four view model. Now, these four, I'm reading this out for you all. I'm not showing it because I'll have to find it. I'm reading this out. This handout in my handout, it is given in change management. If you want, you can. You can find out this chapter of change management and <coughs> organization ensuring business models are implemented, existing organizational structures are taken into account and resources are required. Do you have all the required resources? Information technology, do you have that much? Uh, do you have that hardware and software? Again, this is the same thing that I've re read right now. <laughs> this is basically change related to resources. Prerequisites of change. If you are bringing changing, you know, the existing business model is existing business model is the infrastructure. For example, from tomorrow onwards, we are going to go to computer based working. Before that, we were doing manual working. From tomorrow onwards, we are moving towards computer based working. Do you have the ample amount of computer systems? This means that you do not have an IT infrastructure. Are people immune to the change? Are they willing to go for the change? People. Is processes well defined and SOPs available? And last but not the least, are organization, organizational resources are required for bringing the change or not? Uh, so that is it for my from my side for all online students. I need to talk to the face to face one for the last five minutes. Uh, I need to talk to the face to face one for the last five minutes, and for online ones, I hope to be uh, I hope so you all must have enjoyed. Uh, 
you all must be sh 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 you all must be having my uh, cell number uh, so if anyone of you wants to talk to or maybe they want me to uh, go through their answers they can you know uh, text me around on my whatsapp you uh, you all must be connected through my facebook or other social media account um, see i tried my level best to facilitate you in regard with the uh, this paper i tried my level best to make you guys well prepared now the ball is in your court. I have done ample amount of uh, work on you guys. So I hope so that you are going to make me proud. And uh, you are going to make me uh, feel good about this. Yes. Uh, one more thing. We are going for uh, dinner. Farewell dinner. Top or bath on Wednesday. So all those who want to join, they can join. If you are out of Karachi, then you can join us online. I will create a Zoom link. And I'll share it with you. Uh, till then, take care. I love this. I hope so. You all are going to remember me in your prayers. Uh,